Making a Stuart model steam plant, this is part 41. Commencing the woodwork on the baseboard, starting with the mahogany planking method. This is quite a simple job until you get it wrong. For this size of baseboard, there are quite a few planks to cut. The ones I'm using are three millimeters thick and in very long lengths. The baseboard has been cut to 16 inches by 18 and a quarter inches. That's 16 inches wide by 18 and a quarter inches long. I am purposely going to cut the mahogany planks longer than 18 and a quarter. 18 and 3 eighths of an inch to be exact. This will create a slight overhang that can be flattened off using a belt sander once all the planks are stuck in position. It's better to do it this way than have the planks too short. This shows me cutting the planks to the size that I need using my old Burgess bandsaw and I'm using each plank as a template for the length of the next one. The original planks are about six feet long. I bought a job lot of these from a model shop in Leeds quite a long time ago. And because I bought quite a lot of this stuff and it was all from the same batch, the colour and grain is similar on every plank. Of course it can't be perfect because wood is a natural product and no two pieces are exactly the same. Being a natural product though has its disadvantages. The colours of the planks can suddenly vary considerably. I don't think this is a major issue. With a little bit of variation, the floor will look better. I'm trying to simulate floorboards, but I'm not shortening the planks. I don't want the joints in the floorboards. Because when the steam plant is completed, most of the floor will be covered up by the components of the plant. I continued cutting the planks to the correct length, and then I found that some of them were considerably different to the rest, so these need to be discarded, and I will cut some more in an attempt to get the wood to match a good bit better than it is doing. Here are the planks that don't match, and as you can see, they're completely different to the rest of the ones on the board. Making this baseboard is going to take slightly longer than normal because it will have a special feature. More about that in the next episode. Once I've got all the planks that I needed, I lifted them off the baseboard and stacked them like this, moving towards the rear of the board. Then I knocked the pile over before it fell over. Before planking, it is essential to make sure that the baseboard that you're planking on is clean and free from any particles. And that's why I'm wiping it with a cloth. With a clean, particle-free baseboard, let the planking commence. To do this, I need some specialist tools. These are various spring clamps. And here is a shot of the specialist adhesive that I use when I stick planking onto baseboards. It's medium viscosity superglue or cyanoacrylate adhesive. I find that medium viscosity is best. The thin stuff is too thin and the thick stuff is too thick. In this clip, I'm applying the first line of adhesive to the baseboard. And as you can clearly see, I'm applying a generous coating of this adhesive. I want to make sure that none of these planks lift, and with this amount of cyanoacrylate adhesive, I don't think they're going to do. Experts, please note, I've used this method for quite a lot of baseboards, and currently I don't think I really need too much advice on the subject. Once I'd got all the way to the end, I doubled back to see if I'd missed any areas. And please bear in mind, this procedure needs to be the same for every plank. Here, I'm fitting the plank onto the adhesive. It doesn't grab immediately. So I can lift it off, turn it over to check the coverage, and that's fine. Belt and braces approach, turn the piece of wood around, just to make sure that the coverage is 100%. This is where I need the spring clamps. Once a piece of mahogany planking is stuck to the baseboard, I use several clamps to hold it in position. Once plank number one is fully clamped, I can move on to plank number two, which I'm holding in position first, just to make sure it's a good fit up against the first plank. And it is a good fit, so I apply the adhesive. And just as an afterthought, it's a good idea to tip it on its end to get some adhesive in between the planks, but generally speaking, you don't need to do this because when you push the planks into position, Quite a lot of this super glue will ooze out of the joint. You will notice that I have a cloth handy at all times. For various reasons, the main one to be able to wipe the top of the mahogany to get rid of the surplus adhesive, 
and sometimes to wipe my fingers to get it off my fingers before it sets, and sometimes even to remove it from my trousers if I spill any in that area. Initially the baseboard was overhanging the bench, but in no time at all it was starting to balance in the wrong direction. If you keep watching the video you will notice very shortly that I elevate the board by putting it on another piece of board to just lift it up so I don't have to overhang the bench. When you buy spring clamps, buy just that. Don't buy this type like the one that's sat on all the boards. They're absolutely rubbish and they break very easily. I had a few of these and I'm down to the last one. Because the one that I was handling earlier, I broke. A problem arises very quickly because as soon as you get past the area of the spring clamp's jaws, you have to start improvising. I'm using a pair of 7 inch rulers held under the spring clamps and then as the job progresses I put a weight on the rulers and this seems to work holding the 3mm thick planks very firmly onto the baseboard until the adhesive sets. I'm using a heavy duty spring clamp at the end of each board to secure each plank to the previous one before I start and then I check that everything's ok and the plank isn't warped and if that's the case, which so far so good it has been, I extend the length of the rulers by one plank and here I'm using a piece of hexagon brass which presses on the rulers which in turn hold the planks. In this clip I'm moving the position of the rulers up by one plank. There was quite a lot of adhesive on top of the plank at one side so I wiped it away before applying the spring clamp. This is a very boring and very repetitive job, so I would say to anyone doing it, if you start to get bored, stop the job and do something else. Then you can return to the job when your concentration is suitably refreshed. As the job progresses, I'm using another balance weight in addition to the piece of hexagon. This is a piece of phosphor bronze. And also at this stage, I used a longer ruler and put the heavy pieces of metal on that. I can't just carry on planking this because I have to make a special fitting for the end of the baseboard. I'll show the making of that in the next episode and until then I'd like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.